Hi folks, so first of all, the first thing I'm going to want to do here is I want to display an average stat just like this for each of my teams. So how am I going to do that? Well, come into the club details page and then if you find the, the team stats, which is this bit here on the left, um, right click on team stats and add this new object attributes. You just want to add a vertical layout group here so we can align everything vertically and then a content size fitter and set the vertical fit to preferred size. That will scale this object based on what's inside of it. Inside of it, we've just got four text mesh pro components. Those are going to hold each stat. So if you've got more than four stats, just add as many text mesh pro components for each stat that you want to display. Once you've done that, you'll see here, if I go to club details, I've got new references. So start attacking, start defending, and so on. So let's jump into the code. So if we come into club details UI, you'll see here I've just added some more text mesh pro, uh, serializable, references here so one for each of the average stat displays on the club page and and then if we go to on show we'll call a new method called um, show average stats that's the one there so this is a brand new method that you want to add so what we're doing is we're setting the text of each stat to the average of whatever that stat is and we're doing that by a little getter method here which if we go into team.cs you'll see what i've done here so i'm using a wee link query so all this does is we come in and we grab the players list and we call average, that's your link query, and then we select attacking for attacking and then defending and so on. So we get the average of all those values from the players and then we're doing math f round to round it to zero decimal places. And that's how we get these nice little average stat displays. So if you set everything like that up, you make sure in your club details page, club details UI, that you drag in these references. Whenever you go into a club, you see these average stats. Now we need to get rid of this shite code. So instead of us using that really, really random method, I've integrated this new method here, which takes in the attacking team, the defending team. We assign like a sort of modifier for the technique and the physical stat. Now, for this method, um, we're going to calculate the team offense using the attacking stat and the technique stat multiplied by this wee modifier up the top, which is just a static value. And you can chop and change that to see how you like it. Um, for offense, we're using, sorry, for defense, we're using the defense stat and also the physical stat again with that modifier. We then we get a wee random factor here, which is just basically a number between 0 0.1 and 1. Then we calculate the goal scored by the team that we're assigning it to, which is a calculation using the average offensive stat, which we calculated here. and assigning the random factor as well and then um, also integrating the opponent defense stat. So we're sort of weighing the average stats of offensive and defensive along with technique and physical and then assigning a wee random factor to it as well because there is a bit of randomness to football, isn't there? Then we just return that score. So we're calling this twice. We call it once for the home score. So this is the goal scored by the home team. And we set up the home team as the attacker and the away team as the defender. And then we just reverse it for the away score. Then we just set this to has played equal to true, which I will show you where that comes in in a moment. But first of all, let me just show you this working with a couple of simulation of matches. So you can see we've got some nil nils, um, we've got some three nil, a two, a three two, even one nil, etc. So the scores are quite realistic. You need to kind of t chop and change, tailor the factors. Um, to something that you quite like. If you want more higher scoring uh, matches, you can up those physical and technique factors. So that works quite well, but I quite like the idea of minute-by-minute minute simulation as opposed to just generating some goals that have been made. I like the idea of skipping through each minute, but in order to do that and make it a wee bit more realistic, we need to be able to simulate matches one at a time. So instead of just going to next week, I like this idea of simulating a match by clicking on a wee button on the side and they were all nil nils. What is the chance of that? Can we maybe get something? There's a 2-0. Anyway, um, you'll see here then, the next thing I'm going to do is add this little button on the side of our uh, our fixture. So, how do I do that? Well, you want to come into the result prefab that you've got um, and then you're going to right click on result and you're going to add a new UI button, which is here. And then you get this. So I've called it simulate and it will look like crap on this wee preview screen. You might need to um, tailor these little values here on the horizontal layout group just so it looks a wee bit better, but I have set the um, child size for the width and the height to be controlled by this object. I've removed any spacing that we had and I've made the force expand on both height and width. 
and I've added a wee bit of padding on the left and right to 15 just so that they'll not push right up to the boundaries here um, and you'll then you'll have this wee button and I just added the text to say simulate which is in here. So now let's dive into a little bit of code. So the first thing you should do is come into your fixture.cs and you'll see this new wee value that I pointed out earlier has played is set to false where we are setting the week or the match week to has played we now want to track if an actual fixture itself has been played so that we can simulate them one at a time. So public bill has played is false. Then if we come down a wee bit here, we've got the has played, set that to true um, once we simulate the fixture. Right, so once you've done that, the next thing you're going to, need to do is come into match week. So come into match week here, and when we're looping through all the fixtures that we want to, that we want to simulate, um, we want to check first if this fixture has been simulated. So basically all we do here is add this wee where. So we're still looping through all the fixtures, but we're only looping through fixtures where it hasn't been played. And then come into your home page UI, and I'm going to be doing a wee bit of adjusting here. So we are on the home page. What we were doing before was we were showing results here. So we were actually showing the previous week because we wanted to show results of the previous week that had already been played. But because we now want to simulate them one, one at a time, we want to actually show the fixtures of the current week that we are in. So this is a dead simple one. All you want to do here is, where we are calculating previous week, just get rid of that. Just chuck it. And when you're looping through your fixtures, instead of passing in the previous week, now just pass in the match week. And that's us focusing on the current week. And now the last script that we want to change here is in our fixture UI. So we haven't touched this in a wee bit. Um, you just want to set a reference to and ignore my naming conventions here. But this is one for the bloopers. So it is. There we go. So because that's private. So just add a wee reference to the button that you added. Remember you added the button next to the fixtures that says simulate. So you want a reference to that here. And I've set it to serialize field because it's private. I only want to access it from in here. But I want to assign it on the inspector. Then when I'm setting the inspector text, uh, the fixture text, sorry here, I just want a wee reference to the fixture. So I've added a public fixture fixture and I've now pass in the fixture and assign it here instead of just taking all the details. We've got a new wee method here, configure simulate button. I'm touching that in a wee second. Um, when we come in here to either show the score or hide the score if it hasn't been played and there isn't a score, um, we don't want to check if the match week has been played, which you'll have here. You want to check if the fixture itself has been played. Just a wee change there. Then this is our new method, configure the simulate button. Basically what we're doing is we're protecting ourselves here from showing the simulate button if the match has been played or if this isn't the current week. So the button will be active if it hasn't been played and if we're in the current week. And the reason I'm doing minus one here is because, as you know, when you're a developer, lists start at zero. So effectively, we're starting at zero. But in terms of displaying in the UI, we start at week one. So there's a wee bit of adjusting to be done there. We basically want to make sure that match week, the week number minus one is equal to the current match week, which is our sort of developer-friendly one that starts at zero. So now that we know if the button's going to be active or not, we basically just assign it here on the button. So button, game, game object, set active, equal to whatever we figured out from this bit of logic. So if the button is in fact active, every time we re-render, we just want to remove the listeners and then add a new on-click event, which is going to be this simulate click. So what do we do here? Well, we do fixture, simulate fixture, which you have seen plenty of times now, but it's this wee bit of code that is a wee bit less shite now. It's probably about four on the shite scale out of ten. Then we just do a wee call to league manager instance update standings. So we just update the standings on the league and then we just re-render the home page. So it's not the most efficient because every time we simulate a single match we're re-rendering the home page. But if you want to get a wee proof of concept or a wee demo out there, this is ideal. So now if you do all of that and you need to remember to come into your result prefab find your fixture UI script and just assign that wee button into the sim button value. And then if you click these, all going well, you should be able to individually simulate these scores. And then when you get to the end of the week and you don't get any more, you just click next week, takes you to the next week. Right, so I've simulated a full season here, all right? And we can see Manchester and Stockholm are neck and neck. Newcastle are firmly at the bottom. Let's have a look at their stats and see if we can notice any patterns. So Manchester, league winners, 
So we've got four attacking, five defending, five technique, five physical. That's, I mean, pretty in the middle. The stats can go from one to ten, so that's, I mean, pretty average. Stockholm, five, five, six, six. So they're actually just slightly better on the stats. Uh, Lagos, five attacking, three defending. They got a lot of physical, though, so if physical had more of a bearing on defence, maybe if that 0 0.3 factor was a bit higher, they might have actually conceded less goals. So that'd be interesting. Let's see, Newcastle finished well at the bottom. 4-4, four, 5-4. Four, four. So they are definitely lower, 4-5-5. Five, five. Well, slightly, but definitely lower stats than Stockholm. Uh, what about Cardiff? 4-5. So you see a wee pattern here that these teams, Cardiff and Newcastle, they do in fact have lower stats than Manchester and Stockholm. Stockholm have definitely got better stats than Manchester. So that wee random factor in there does add um, a wee bit of, well, randomness like it's supposed to. Um, but these teams at the bottom, they seem to be at the bottom for a reason, because their stats are lower, because their players are poorer. Um, so we've adjusted that a wee bit. We've added a factor in there, a simulation to calculate the score, and we've added this extra little bit of functionality so that we can simulate each match individually. That is going to serve us big time going into this next episode of the tutorial. So episode 6, we are going to add a brand new method and we're going to add a new screen as well, which if some of you have played Football Manager, the older versions back in the day, or even now when you play it text only, you'll recognise it. We're going to create like a scrolling event list that shows each minute of the game what's happening and that's going to be really exciting because that is instead of just simulating a score and assigning two score values, we're actually going through the match minute by minute and building a real sort of football simulation match there. So I hope you've enjoyed this guys. I hope it's been helpful. That is my goal with these videos is to hopefully teach you a thing or two and provide a wee bit of interest for folk that have, like myself, have got a massive passion for football manager and simulation games. So episode six will be all about making a minute by minute simulation. So if you want to see that, I really love it if you would like the video and also subscribe because then you will get straight away, you'll get access to episode six as soon as it's out. So thanks very much guys. I'll see you next time.